Welcome everybody to the Maurice Velasquez Show. Thank you for joining us. Uh, today uh, we have a really important show and the reason why it's important is because all of us have been sent home. Uh, all of us have been sent to work from our homes, uh, to leave large crowds, to uh, everybody work remotely. And what we're finding out is that a lot of us don't know how to do that. Uh, I've been talking to lots of my clients, all of my clients, and we're all facing the same thing. As a matter of fact, if you're watching me on Facebook right now, you can pretty much tell that I'm in a new setup. And the last two, two and a half days have been me taking my office and reconfiguring my entire design uh, so that I could be productive from home uh, and making sure that my team could also be productive from home. And I've done this many times. I've had to do it many times. And now all of, our, all of my clients and everybody everywhere is having to figure out how to become remote, stay productive, stay engaged, uh, and somehow mix this whole balance of, of being productive in office work while the home becomes very disrupted. Uh, and then how do we create ty a, 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 a certain type of co cohesiveness and motivation. The hardest part about this is managing teams remotely. It's hard enough when we don't have to face a coronavirus. It's hard enough when we're not having to face an entire shutdown of our economy. Uh, but here we are, and nonetheless, we're all faced on knowing how to do it. So um, uh, that's what this show is about today. The title of the show is Setting Up and Managing Teams Remotely. So uh, I have attended three to four different webinars in the last uh, 20, uh, in the last 48 hours of groups around town and at a national level who have done a fantastic job uh, giving input and insight on what to do, how to set things up remotely, and then how to make the shift. Um, and so most of them have been addressing this from the technology side, from the uh, efficiency side, from the tools, uh, from the setup, from the software end, the hardware end, and none of that has gone to waste. I've taken a lot of uh, uh, good insight from all of them, and I recommend that if you find any of those webinars or on-site courses, uh, g g make use of them. However, today, I'm gonna focus on what I believe is probably the hardest part about it is how do you approach, how do you set up, and how do you manage a team remotely uh, on a management perspective, from a people pr perspective, from a motivational perspective, from a productivity standpoint. How do you do that? All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to dedicate our entire show, and if, as you know, we break it up into four segments, and each segment, uh, the first segment, I'm going to identify the nine things that you have to do, plus the tools and the training that you have to have and get ready to face. And then I'm gonna break each one of those up for the rest of the show. So let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so the, the, the nine things that you have to do in order to set up and manage your team are the following. First of all, and I'm gonna go through them real quickly and then I'm gonna dissect them uh, more on the back end. You have, to, you have to first define who is going to work at home and who can work at the office. Uh, that's, that's number one. You have to have a list of who you're going to support uh, remotely and who's going to be at the office so you can build a camaraderie and a, and a tight, tight knit group from the home office or from the local offices supporting the, the, the remote team. Secondly, the actual setup itself. The, then the third, you have to work, you have to set up daily and weekly goals. And this is very tied to four and five and six because at the end of the day, you want to help build your remote team, build some type of routine, some type of structure. Because look, it's hard enough for all of us to work at the office and be organized. Now, we don't have anything around us that tells us to work. So if we don't help to set that up for our team that's having to work remotely, and you're leaving it up for everybody to figure it out, then you're probably not going to be as productive as if you created a concerted effort and a, and a, and a uniform uh, uh, approach to helping everybody get set up. And the way to get set up is to have daily goals and weekly goals. Then you have to identify the things that can't be done remotely because you then have to identify whether those 
remote, those ish, those tasks and responsibilities that can't be done remotely, who can do those? Can they? Can the team at the home office do it? Can the team, or or what do we do? Do we have drivers to go pick up mail, that sort? So we'll, we'll dissect more of that a little later. Then the actual reporting element, okay? Um, then you have to set up routines of communication, all right? And you have to have a support system very organized in what, what I call the leadership rhythm, uh, so that it can, the whole the whole project of having a remote team can be supported. Remember, this is a new normal for all of us. So you can't, you should not expect to just say to people, all right, everybody go home and and work remotely, and we'll see productivity uh, be sustained. That only happens is if you if is if you've done this before, and everyone knows how to do it. But if you've never done this before, then don't take your eyes off of it. You have to identify somebody to quarterback and oversee that this is being done correctly, that this is being done uniformly, and that folks aren't falling through the gaps and never hearing from the, the from their supervisors or their managers on a regular basis. So uh, the communication rhythm and the support element that the management and the leadership team needs to provide is important. So we'll dissect that. Then number eight, what I would call an all-team a conference call. Uh, we're going to talk about that much more in the upcoming segments. There has to be an initial call that you be, you gather everybody together and you lay out in real uh, 7, 10, probably 15 minutes max how you're going to roll this out and you fill that that call with not only motivation but really good instructions of how you're going to tackle this. Uh, again, at the end, towards the end of the show, I will talk about how Two of my clients did this. One of them did it this morning. The other one did it yesterday, and they were superb. They, they asked me to join in it. Uh, I coached some of them on how to do it. Uh, one of them actually knew already how to do it. They just get, I just helped them to find tune, fine tune some things. But both of them did a fantastic job in that initial call to the entire team. The message was positive. The message was reassuring. They provided great information, and they pretty much set themselves very much, um, uh, what would you say, um, very transparent because they were just they, they they made themselves vulnerable because they admitted, look, we really don't know how what, how we're going to do this, but we're going to do it. We're going to try it. We need you guys to tell us what's working, what's not working. And so that initial call is very important, but you then have to follow it up with other calls, and we'll dissect that more uh, in the uh, on uh, as we as we dissect this. All right, and then um, you have to build the last element is you have to build a very conscious, uh, proactive sense of fun. You have to build a lot of fun around this because everyone's remote. Again, people love to go to work. 60, 70 percent time because of the friends they have there. But now we're look at me. I'm, I'm by myself, you know, and I even have a hard time uh, because I'm a very social person. Most team members are very social. It doesn't matter whether they're extroverts or introverts. They need people around them, and now they're not around them. So if we don't have a way to connect back into that somehow, then it becomes really difficult to be productive at home. All right, and then we're going to dissect into some more of the tools and the training. Let me make this the, the, this very important point. Whenever you're trying to help your teams become productive it remotely, remember you cannot expect them to give you a full eight hours worth of work. It's just not possible, okay? Uh, unless you've done this a long time and everyone knows how to work from home, it's not realistic. But what you can shoot for is if they give you a solid four hours, a solid five hours, what's interesting about this, if you do this correct, is that they'll probably give you 100% of five hours, and that's probably more than what they've been giving you at work, and they'll find themselves extremely effective. So if, you, if they give you four to five hours, perhaps even six hours, of tremendously good focused work at remotely, look, reward them just by not being so pressure on them to do those extra two hours because the productivity and effectiveness of them being really good in those hours, you'll probably notice the difference.